Wow, what an amazing turnout for a cold Sunday night in Melbourne. Uh, over 300 people here to celebrate our shared support for Israel. My name is James Patterson. I'm a Liberal Senator for Victoria and in conjunction with my friends Tim Wilson MP and David Southwick MP, I'm honoured to be a patron of the Liberal Friends of Victoria, uh, which of course we're launching here tonight. Uh, could you all please be upstanding for the Central Shul Choir who will be performing the Australian National Anthem, followed by Rabbi Reisenberg, our host here tonight, who will welcome you formally. Hello, uh, rabbis, distinguished members of parliament, uh, community leaders, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I take uh, this opportunity of welcoming you here this evening on this very special occasion of the launch of the Liberal Friends of Israel to Central Shul Chabad. Uh, not long ago when uh, David called me, I, I was delighted to learn uh, of this uh, wonderful initiative that he had put in place together with Tim Wilson and James Patterson, and particularly that they had chosen uh, Central Shul uh, to launch this new uh, organisation. But when he told me the date, I looked in my Hebrew calendar and I saw the date as being the 10th of Av. It's, it's a fast day. It's a fast day. A fast day that commemorates the destruction of our holy temple in Jerusalem. And, and many people uh, have uh, first of all just completed this fast, 24 hour fast at 6pm. And I thought, was this the right date for this event? And I reflected. The purpose of the fasting is not about the past, it's actually about the future. Because the biblical prophets of Israel foretold that there will come a time that the third temple will once again be rebuilt in Jerusalem. We hope, we fast in that hope that this temple should be rebuilt in our days. And then what better way? What better way then to launch such a new organisation, an organisation that is there to build up goodwill, to build up friendship and to build up brotherhood between Australia and Israel, than to launch this on this day, a day after we fast for the destruction of the temple because we are now in the process of rebuilding. But why are we here tonight? Why are we here tonight? And I know many of you are here to uh, give support to Israel. That is the only democracy in the Middle East. Uh, I know many of you are here, are here this evening to give support to Israel. That is constantly vilified in the media and the press. 
and I know many of you are here, to establish the right of the Jewish people to have a homeland in that biblical land that God gave to our forefather Abraham. But there's a, another reason, another reason to uh, support Israel. Uh, not long ago, a group of uh, Christian Zionist uh, journalists uh, went to Israel and they had a, uh, a private meeting with uh, uh, Bibi Netanyahu, the Prime Minister. <coughs> and one of them asked, why is it that Israel is always at the forefront when there is an international crisis, whether it is in Japan, in Haiti, in Mexico, and just now in, in Thailand? And the Prime Minister responded that we, the Jewish people, Israel has a biblical charge that Israel must be a light unto the nations. And by helping people in need, we are fulfilling our deepest values and our deepest mission to be a light unto the nations. And there is a further reason why we must support Israel because Israel represents those eternal biblical values of compassion, of humanity, of justice and truth. Values that uh, we must all hold sacred. And that is why we must support Israel. And this is why we are here uh, tonight. Thank you. Rabbi, thank you so much for hosting us here tonight in your beautiful shul. Uh, my role tonight uh, is to be your master of ceremonies. Firstly, I'll outline how the evening will run, and then I'm gonna recognize some of the very many special guests who have joined us. In a moment, my colleague, Tim Wilson, will introduce our first guest speaker, uh, the Minister for Energy and Environment, Josh Frydenberg. Then David Southwick will uh, invite our second guest speaker, Victorian Liberal leader Matthew Guy to say a few words. Jill Curry, one of our Christian Zionist friends, will introduce our third speaker, former Australian ambassador to Israel, Dave Sharma. Later on, we'll hear again from the Shul Choir. Then Shireen Hamber, president of Zionism Victoria, will speak on behalf of the Jewish community, and we will be uh, standing for the Israeli national anthem. And finally, I'll be closing the proceedings and inviting you all to stay to share a drink and a bite to eat next door in the hall. Now, please bear with me while I recognise our very extensive lineup of special guests, in addition uh, to our guest speakers. You will definitely have to reserve your applause for the end, otherwise we will actually be here all night. Uh, on behalf of the Israeli Embassy in Canberra, Dorit Herskovici, from the Liberal Party organisation, Federal Young Liberal President Josh Manawatu and Will Namesh from the New South Wales Liberal Friends of Israel. Uh, an impressive lineup of state parliamentarians who I'll ask to stand, including Bruce Atkinson, Mary Waldridge, Michael O'Brien, David Davis, Nick Wakeling, Neil Burgess, Inga Powlich, David Morris, John Pasuto, Georgie Crozier, Bernie Finn, Margaret Fitzherbert, Dee Ryle, Louise Daly, Graham Watt and Roma Britnell. Uh, Matthew, I think that's probably quorum for a party room meeting. <laughs> Can I also ask to stand the Liberal candidates at the upcoming state election, including Asher Judah, Katie Allen, Russell Joseph, John Sherink, Marilyn Klein and Jeff Gledhill. We're also joined by former Liberal MPs, Steve MacArthur and Helen Shardy, who in her own time here as the member for Caulfield, also ran a terrific Friends of Israel group that I think effectively we're reviving tonight. Thank you, Helen. <laughs> we're joined by a number of local councillors, Councillor Jamie Hyams, Councillor Joel Silva, Councillor Marcus Pearl, Councillor Theo, Theo Zagrofis and Councillor Robert Davies. Thank you for being here. And from our wonderful Jewish community, we have Rabbi Pini Super, Rabbi Herzog, Rabbi Daniel Rabin, Rabbi Yaakov Glassman, Rabbi Danny Mervis, uh, Dr. Danny Lamb and Jeanette Searle from the Zionist Federation of Australia, Hayley Southwick and Aidan Goldberger from the UIA Victoria, 
uh, John Searle from Zionism Victoria, Devere Abramovich from the Anti-Defamation Commission, Anton Herman from the Jewish Community Council of Victoria, and Colin Rubenstein from AJAC. Lastly, I just want to thank and recognise our special sponsor for the evening, Henry Schachter from 94 Feet. Thank you very much for your support. And thank you everyone for bearing with me. I'm glad that didn't keep going. Uh, thank you everyone for bearing with me. I think what we can all agree is that shows the broad support in the community that this cause has and uh, we should be very proud of that. I'll now hand over to Tim to introduce our first guest speaker, Josh Breidenberg. Thank you very much, James, and thank you, everybody, who is here tonight. And I'd like to also uh, express my thanks to the rabbi. Thank you for having us here at Central Shul. It's wonderful to be back again, uh, one of the most impressive shuls in the Goldstein community. And also, of course, to say welcome to Goldstein to everybody if it's your first time. Uh, and of course, if you live here, it is a privilege to be able to represent you in the federal parliament. Of course, amongst all of the people who have been acknowledged tonight, and there are many people, uh, it is, of course, a dutiful role on myself, and particularly in the Jewish community, to recognise where true power lies. And so I'd also like to acknowledge my mother, who has come along tonight. <laughs> But it's also a great privilege to be able to introduce why our first guest speaker, Josh Frydenberg. Uh, Josh will not be somebody anonymous to you in this room, but nor will he be anonymous to anybody in the nation. If you wake up and turn on the radio at 6am, I'm sorry to say, Josh, sometimes you are the first voice I hear in the morning. <laughs> you are a powerhouse politically and one of the six Jewish members of the federal parliament, but I do need to note the only one in cabinet. And he is responsible for the great challenges that affect our nation, particularly in the energy policy space as Minister for Energy and, of course, the environment as well. Would everybody please welcome Josh Frydenberg. Well, thanks, Tim. Firstly, can I acknowledge the rabbi and the members of this community and just say how wonderful it is to see such a broad cross-section uh, of the senior representation from the community here today. Can I acknowledge Matthew Guy and say again um, to see so many uh, senior members of your team here standing side by side with Israel. And when we think about some of the words and the actions you see coming from the Labor left and from the union movement towards Israel, your voice is one for reason and for strength and we thank you for it. So thank you, Matthew. And to my parliamentary colleagues, James Patterson and Tim Wilson and David Southwick, um, this is a real credit to you. This is a wonderful initiative. And again, Helen uh, had something going similar in the past, but this is long overdue. Uh, you can see by the strength of support here tonight, but also you live out your actions uh, and, your, uh, and your words because you're constantly out there in the media, in the parliament, defending Israel against the naysayers. And we all thank you for this initiative, but also for your constant vigilance in the community at large as leading politicians at both the federal and state level. So thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's one set of statistics that reminds us of why we're here tonight. It comes from the UN Human Rights Council. Since its establishment, it has passed 70 resolutions condemning Israel. That's as many resolutions condemning Israel as the rest of the world combined. Since 2006, the UN Human Rights Council has held 22 urgent sessions, more than a third Eight of them have been on Israel. Five have been on Syria. Two have been on Burma. One has been on Sudan 
and one on Libya, one on Congo. That's right. No urgent resolutions about North Korea. No urgent resolutions about Iran. No urgent resolutions about Zimbabwe or Venezuela. As millions have been killed by these authoritarian dictatorships around the world, Israel, the only democracy in the Middle East, has been singled out. This is why, friends, Israel needs us. And this is why we need Israel. Because if Israel is not strong and if Israel does not prosper, then the values that we hold dear, freedom, the rule of law, equality and human rights, are diminished. And ever since our wonderful great party, the Liberal Party of Australia, was founded more than 70 years ago by Sir Robert Gordon Menzies, the Liberal Party has stood side by side with Israel and the Jewish people. It was on the 23rd of October 1965 at a special gala event in Canberra that marked the naming of a forest in Israel in Sir Robert Menzies' name, that he got up among those present and talked about his personal friendship and fellowship with Rabbi Brody and Baron Schneider and said, and I quote, Israel is a vindication of redemption and its delivery of people from bondage and relief from persecution. The Jewish community, which then numbered some 70,000, Menzies said, was where he felt at home. And if you look at his actions in standing up to totalitarianism and fascism, and in 1956, with Richard Casey as his Minister for External Affairs, standing with Israel during the Suez Crisis when many other countries didn't, Menzies also lived those words. And in 1966, he was going to visit Israel but fell ill. So he sent Paul Hasluck, then his Minister for External Affairs. It was the first time a cabinet minister from the federal government of Australia had ever visited Israel. And Hasluck was warmly welcomed by Levi Ashkol and Abba Eban and talked about his meetings there. And that tradition that the Liberal Party started from its inception of having a friendship with the Jewish people in Israel continued through Harold Holt and McMahon and Gorton and Fraser. Because in 1981, when Israel bombed the nuclear reactor in Iraq, Fraser would not condemn Israel. And then John Howard, a giant among men in the way he stood for what Israel stands for. And he was awarded the Jerusalem Prize by the Zionist Federation of Australia for his service. And Tony Abbott continued that tradition too. And now Menachem Turnbull stands in those seats. <laughs> in fact, he knows the brachas better than many a Scopus graduate, I can tell you. <laughs> As our good friend Dave Sharma, another wonderful, wonderful supporter of Israel, knows all too well. So ladies and gentlemen, I stand here before you as a proud Jewish member of the parliament. But it's not my Jewishness that defines my support of Israel. As we know from all the faces here who sit in our parliament who are supporting Israel. It's about what Israel stands for. 
It's about its values, it's about its traditions, it's about its culture, and it's about its history. But nothing that Israel stands for, we can take for granted. Because there's a pincer movement on right now against Israel, it starts by the effort to delegitimize Israel in the minds and the of the world. Howard saw it with the Durban conference against so-called racism. We see it with the BDS movement. People demonstrating at chocolate shops and cafes merely because it can be traced back to Israel as the own. Or academics who want to come and teach in Australia about peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians are stopped by anti-Semites and racists at our universities. Not to, not to mention what we see in the United Kingdom from Jeremy Corbyn or here from the divisive and despicable Bob Carr. Ladies and gentlemen, that is part of the pincer movement to delegitimize Israel before our very eyes. But there's another big threat, and that's the existential threat that comes from Iran and its proxies and its acolytes across the Middle East. I was here when Bibi Netanyahu made the first visit by a sitting Prime Minister to Australia. And he came and he sat and he talked with a number of us from the cabinet. And his message privately is the same as it is publicly. Iran is sponsoring a Shiite axis against Israel that goes through Iraq, goes up to Syria, through Lebanon and Yemen, and is designed to exert maximum pressure on Israel with a view to destroying Israel. That's what we're up against. We're up against it not as Israelis, but as people who believe in the state of Israel. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. This is the start. Your actions tonight are significant, but it's what this group, as the liberal friends of Israel, can do in the future which will make a difference. And I have to say, Sir Robert Menzies, who died some 30 years ago, would be looking up from his words at that gala event in October 1965 and proud what we, as Liberals, are doing here today. Thank you very much. Firstly, Idan Goldberger, thank you very much for the Israeli tie. That you are. <laughs> um, Josh, that was fantastic, and we really do appreciate all the work you do in the federal parliament, and the words today importantly gave us a context of Israel and the Jewish community and importantly the Liberal Party support for both. Thank you very much. It, uh, it makes me very proud to be here tonight to particularly join with my colleagues Tim Wilson and James Patterson in putting this together in what will be the first of a lot of advocacy supporting Israel. As Josh said, we have a lot of... Wow. What an amazing turnout for a cold Sunday night in Melbourne. Uh, over 300 people here to celebrate our shared support for Israel. My name is James Patterson. I'm a Liberal Senator for Victoria, and in conjunction with my friends Tim Wilson MP and David Southwick MP, I'm honoured to be a patron of the Liberal Friends of Victoria, uh, which of course we're launching here tonight. 
Uh, could you all please be upstanding for the Central Shul Choir, who will be performing the Australian National Anthem, followed by Rabbi Reisenberg, our host here tonight, who will welcome you formally. Rabbis, distinguished members of parliament, uh, community leaders, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I take uh, this opportunity of welcoming you here this evening on this very special occasion of the launch of the Liberal Friends of Israel to Central Shul Chabad. Uh, not long ago when uh, David called me. I, I was delighted to learn uh, of this uh, wonderful initiative that he had put in place together with Tim Wilson and James Patterson, and particularly that they had chosen uh, Central Shul uh, to launch this new uh, organisation. But when he told me the date, I looked in my Hebrew calendar and I saw the date as being the 10th of Av. It's, it's a fast day. It's a fast day. A fast day that commemorates the destruction of our holy temple in Jerusalem. And, and many people uh, have uh, erstwhile just completed this fast, 24-hour fast at 6 p.m. And I thought, was this the right date for this event? And I reflected. The purpose of the fasting is not about the past, it's actually about the future. Because the biblical prophets of Israel foretold that there will come a time that the third temple will once again be rebuilt in Jerusalem. We hope, we fast in that hope that this temple should be rebuilt in our days. And then what better way? What better way then to launch such a new organisation, an organisation that is there to build up goodwill, to build up friendship and to build up brotherhood between Australia and Israel, than to launch this on this day, a day after we fast for the destruction of the temple, because we are now in the process of rebuilding. But why are we here tonight? Why are we here tonight? And I know many of you are here to uh, give support to Israel. That is the only democracy in the Middle East. Uh, I know many of you are here, are here this evening to give support to Israel that is constantly vilified in the media and the press. And I know many of you are here to establish the right of the Jewish people to have our homeland in that biblical land that God gave to our forefather Abraham. But there's a, another reason, another reason to uh, support Israel. Uh, not long ago, a group of uh, Christian Zionist uh, journalists uh, went to Israel and they had a, uh, a private meeting with uh, uh, Bibi Netanyahu, the Prime Minister. <laughs> and one of them asked, 
Why is it that Israel is always at the forefront when there is an international crisis, whether it is in Japan, in Haiti, in Mexico, and just now in, in Thailand? And the Prime Minister responded that we, the Jewish people, Israel has a biblical charge that Israel must be a light unto the nations and by helping people in need we are fulfilling our deepest values and our deepest mission to be a light unto the nations. And there is a further reason why we must support Israel is because Israel represents those eternal biblical values of compassion, of humanity, of justice and truth. Values that uh, we must all hold sacred. And that is why we must support Israel. And this is why we are here uh, tonight. Thank you. Rabbi, thank you so much for hosting us here tonight in your beautiful shul. Uh, my role tonight uh, is to be your master of ceremonies. Firstly, I'll outline how the evening will run, and then I'm going to recognise some of the very many special guests who have joined us. In a moment, my colleague Tim Wilson will introduce our first guest speaker, uh, the Minister for Energy and Environment, Josh Frydenberg. Then David Southwick will uh, invite our second guest speaker, Victorian Liberal leader Matthew Guy to say a few words. Jill Curry, one of our Christian Zionist friends, will introduce our third speaker, former Australian ambassador to Israel, Dave Sharma. Later on, we'll hear again from the Shul Choir. Then Shireen Hamber, president of Zionism Victoria, will speak on behalf of the Jewish community, and we will be uh, standing for the Israeli national anthem. And finally, I'll be closing the proceedings and inviting you all to stay to share a drink and a bite to eat next door in the hall. Now, please bear with me while I recognise our very extensive lineup of special guests, in addition uh, to our guest speakers. You will definitely have to reserve your applause for the end, otherwise we will actually be here all night. Uh, on behalf of the Israeli Embassy in Canberra, Dorit Herskovici, from the Liberal Party organisation, Federal Young Liberal President Josh Manawatu and Will Namesh from the New South Wales Liberal Friends of Israel. Uh, an impressive lineup of state parliamentarians who I'll ask to stand, including Bruce Atkinson, Mary Wooldridge, Michael O'Brien, David Davis, Nick Wakeling, Neil Burgess, Inga Powlich, David Morris, John Pasuto, Georgie Crozier, Bernie Finn, Margaret Fitzherbert, Dee Ryle, Louise Daly, Graham Watt, and Roma Britnell. Uh, Matthew, I think that's probably quorum for a party room meeting. <laughs> Can I also ask to stand the Liberal candidates at the upcoming state election, including Asher Judah, Katie Allen, Russell Joseph, John Sherink, Marilyn Klein and Jeff Gledhill. <laughs> We're also joined by former Liberal MPs Steve MacArthur and Helen Shardy, who in her own time here as the member for Caulfield also ran a terrific Friends of Israel group that I think effectively we're reviving tonight. Thank you, Helen. We're joined by a number of local councillors, Councillor Jamie Hyams, Councillor Joel Silver, Councillor Marcus Pearl, Councillor Theo, Theo Zagrofis and Councillor Robert Davies. Thank you for being here. And from our wonderful Jewish community, we have Rabbi Pini Super, Rabbi Herzog, Rabbi Daniel Rabin, Rabbi Yaakov Glassman, Rabbi Danny Mervis, uh, Dr Danny Lamb and Jeanette Searle from the Zionist Federation of Australia. Hayley Southwick and Aidan Goldberger from the UIA Victoria, uh, John Searle from Zionism Victoria, Devere Abramovich from the Anti-Defamation Commission, Anton Herman from the Jewish Community Council of Victoria, and Colin Rubenstein from AJAC. Lastly, I just want to thank and recognise our special sponsor for the evening, Henry Schachter from 94 Feet. Thank you very much for your support. And thank you everyone for bearing with me. I'm glad that didn't keep going. 
Uh, thank you everyone for bearing with me. I think what we can all agree is that shows the broad support in the community that this cause has and uh, we should be very proud of that. I'll now hand over to Tim to introduce our first guest speaker, Josh Breidenberg. Thank you very much, James, and thank you everybody who is here tonight. And I'd like to also uh, express my thanks to the rabbi. Thank you for having us here at Central Shul. It's wonderful to be back again, uh, one of the most impressive shuls in the Goldstein community. And also, of course, to say welcome to Goldstein to everybody if it's your first time. Uh, and of course, if you live here, it is a privilege to be able to represent you in the federal parliament. Of course, amongst all of the people who have been acknowledged tonight, and there are many people, uh, it is, of course, a dutiful role on myself and particularly in the Jewish community to recognise where true power lies. And so I'd also like to acknowledge my mother, who has come along tonight. <laughs> but it's also a great privilege to be able to introduce why our first guest speaker, Josh Frydenberg. Uh, Josh will not be somebody anonymous to you in this room, but nor will he be anonymous to anybody in the nation. If you wake up and turn on the radio at 6am, I'm sorry to say, Josh, sometimes you are the first voice I hear in the morning. <laughs> you are a powerhouse politically and one of the six Jewish members of the federal parliament, but I do need to note the only one in cabinet. And he is responsible for the great challenges that affect our nation, particularly in the energy policy space as Minister for Energy and, of course, the environment as well. Would everybody please welcome Josh Frydenberg. Well, thanks, Tim. Firstly, can I acknowledge the rabbi and the members of this community and just say how wonderful it is to see such a broad cross-section uh, of the senior representation from the community here today. Can I acknowledge Matthew Guy and say again um, to see so many uh, senior members of your team here standing side by side with Israel. And when we think about some of the words and the actions you see coming from the Labor left and from the union movement towards Israel, your voice is one for reason and for strength, and we thank you for it. So thank you, Matthew. And to my parliamentary colleagues, James Patterson and Tim Wilson and David Southwick, um, this is a real credit to you. This is a wonderful initiative, and again, Helen uh, had something going similar in the past, but this is long overdue. Uh, you can see by the strength of support here tonight, but also you live out your actions uh, and, your, uh, and your words because you're constantly out there in the media, in the parliament, defending Israel against the naysayers. And we all thank you for this initiative, but also for your constant vigilance in the community at large as leading politicians at both the federal and state level. So thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's one set of statistics that reminds us of why we're here tonight. It comes from the UN Human Rights Council. Since its establishment, it has passed 70 resolutions condemning Israel. That's as many resolutions condemning Israel as the rest of the world combined. Since 2006, the UN Human Rights Council has held 22 urgent sessions. More than a third, eight of them, have been on Israel. Five have been on Syria. Two have been on Burma. One has been on Sudan and one on Libya, one on Congo. That's right. No urgent resolutions about North Korea. No urgent resolutions about Iran. No urgent resolutions about Zimbabwe or Venezuela. As millions have been killed by these authoritarian dictatorships around the world, Israel, the only democracy in the Middle East has been singled out. This is why, friends, 
Israel needs us. And this is why we need Israel. Because if Israel is not strong and if Israel does not prosper, then the values that we hold dear, freedom, the rule of law, equality and human rights are diminished. And ever since our wonderful great party, the Liberal Party of Australia, was founded more than 70 years ago by Sir Robert Gordon Menzies, the Liberal Party has stood side by side with Israel and the Jewish people. It was on the 23rd of October 1965 at a special gala event in Canberra that marked the naming of a forest in Israel in Sir Robert Menzies' name. That he got up among those present and talked about his personal friendship and fellowship with Rabbi Brody and Baron Schneider and said, and I quote, Israel is a vindication of redemption and its delivery of people from bondage and relief from persecution. The Jewish community, which then numbered some 70,000, Menzies said, was where he felt at home. And if you look at his actions in standing up to totalitarianism and fascism, and in 1956, with Richard Casey as his Minister for External Affairs, standing with Israel during the Suez Crisis when many other countries didn't, Menzies also lived those words. And in 1966, he was going to visit Israel but fell ill. So he sent Paul Hasluck, then his Minister for External Affairs. It was the first time a cabinet minister from the federal government of Australia had ever visited Israel. And Hasluck was warmly welcomed by Levi Ashkol and Abba Eban and talked about his meetings there. And that tradition that the Liberal Party started from its inception of having a friendship with the Jewish people in Israel continued through Harold Holt and McMahon and Gorton and Fraser because in 1981 when Israel bombed the nuclear reactor in Iraq Fraser would not condemn Israel and then John Howard a giant among men in the way he stood for what Israel stands for and he was awarded the Jerusalem Prize by the Zionist Federation of Australia for his service. And Tony Abbott continued that tradition too. And now Menachem Turnbull stands in those seats. <laughs> in fact, he knows the brachas better than many a Scopus graduate, I can tell you. <laughs> As our good friend Dave Sharma, another wonderful, wonderful supporter of Israel knows all too well. So ladies and gentlemen, I stand here before you as a proud Jewish member of the parliament. But it's not my Jewishness that defines my support of Israel. As we know from all the faces here who sit in our parliament who are supporting Israel. It's about what Israel stands for. It's about its values. It's about its traditions, it's about its culture, and it's about its history. But nothing that Israel stands for, we can take for granted. Because there's a pincer movement on right now against Israel, it starts by the effort to delegitimize Israel in the minds and the, of the world. Howard saw it with the Durban conference against so-called racism. We see it with the BDS movement. 
people demonstrating at chocolate shops and cafes merely because it can be traced back to Israel and the own. Or academics who want to come and teach in Australia about peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians are stopped by anti-Semites and racists at our universities. Not to, mi not to mention what we see in the United Kingdom from Jeremy Corbyn or here from the divisive and despicable Bob Carr. Ladies and gentlemen, that is part of the pincer movement, to delegitimize Israel before our very eyes. But there's another big threat, and that's the existential threat that comes from Iran and its proxies and its acolytes across the Middle East. I was here when Bibi Netanyahu made the first visit by a sitting Prime Minister to Australia. And he came and he sat and he talked with a number of us from the Cabinet. And his message privately is the same as it is publicly. Iran is sponsoring a Shiite axis against Israel that goes through Iraq, goes up to Syria, through Lebanon and Yemen, and is designed to exert maximum pressure on Israel with a view to destroying Israel. That's what we're up against. We're up against it not as Israelis, but as people who believe in the state of Israel. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. This is the start. Your actions tonight are significant, but it's what this group, as the Liberal Friends of Israel, can do in the future which will make a difference. And I have to say, Sir Robert Menzies, who died some 30 years ago, would be looking up from his words at that gala event in October 1965 and proud what we as Liberals are doing here today. Thank you very much. Firstly, Idan Goldberger, thank you very much for the Israeli tie, everyone. <laughs> um, Josh, that was fantastic, and we really do appreciate all the work you do in the federal parliament. And the words today, importantly, gave us a context of Israel and the Jewish community, and importantly, the Liberal Party's support for both. Thank you very much. It, uh, it makes me very proud to be here tonight to particularly join with my colleagues Tim Wilson and James Patterson in putting this together in what will be the first of a lot of advocacy supporting Israel. As Josh said, we have a lot of my colleagues and, and Matthew's colleagues here tonight sitting here and particularly many of you have travelled far and wide to be here and candidates as well. And nothing makes me prouder as a Jew when I have colleagues of mine that are not Jewish, but stand up proudly and support Israel. And that is what it is all about. I know Helen had the privilege of doing that as a member of Caulfield, and it is my privilege to do the same. Uh, many say to me that uh, when you, uh, as a Victorian member of parliament, a state member of parliament, isn't a lot of the work that's done on Israel at the federal level. Well, a lot of it needs to be done at the state level, because when Israel is attacked, it comes home here in our state in Victoria whether it be anti-Semitism on campus, anti-Semitism in our synagogues, we see it. And at the other end of the spectrum, the kinds of work we can do in innovation, in connecting with Israel and Victoria, are some of the things that we focus on, we believe are the great opportunities for our state. I also wanted to just thank Rabbi Reisenberg for your support. Rabbi, where are you? Thank you very much for hosting us here and to the choir and to Didi. Could you please give them another round of applause? Thank you. And to all of the rabbis that are here today and to all of the leaders of our community and to all of you in the broader community, 
This is about advocacy, not just as Jewish community members, but it is Christians, Catholics, any, any faith persuasion, any background that you are, we are joining together to unite in supporting Israel. And I thank you. I know people have come far and wide, and I thank you all that have been here. Please give yourself a big round of applause too. It is my great pleasure to now introduce my good friend and the next Premier of Victoria, Matthew Guy. One of the highlights of being a, a, a Jewish Member of Parliament and also the co-convener of the Parliamentary Friends of Israel is to take many of our parliamentarians on trips and I know a number of you, uh, my colleagues, have been to Israel. We've taken, I've taken about 25 Members of Parliament in the um, seven or eight years that I've been in Parliament. The highlight for me was just recently when I got to take Matthew because Matthew, for his first trip, um, certainly as a friend and uh, since I joined the parliament in 2010 has been a solid advocate for Israel and takes every opportunity to speak out proudly supporting Israel. But when he went and when he got to see it firsthand and when he got to experience exactly what Israel is about and since he has come back he has been a changed man. He's always been a great man but now he's, he's a, a changed man. People often have their different highlights of Israel, whether it be Tel Aviv, whether it be the beaches and everything else, but Matthew's highlight has been Jerusalem. The spiritual element of Israel really connected with Matthew, and I think you'll hear that when he speaks tonight. Could you please join with me in welcoming the next Premier of Victoria, Matthew Guy, everybody. Rabbi Reisenberg. We're here because of all the shuls I've been to, you've got the most comfortable seats. <laughs> That's no disrespect to the other two rabbis eyeballing me at this point in time. But thank you so much for having us. Thank you to the shul committee, to everyone who is hosting us for hosting the Liberal Friends of Israel here today, tonight. Uh, we very, very much appreciate it and we appreciate the, the beautiful venue that you've, you've allowed us to use. To the other rabbis here tonight, uh, some of my very good friends, thank you for being here. To um, all of my state parliamentary and federal parliamentary colleagues, but I'll just talk if I can about my state colleagues at this point. The one thing I'm always very proud to say and to see when we talk about Israel is not 90%, not 95, not even 99, how 100% of the state parliamentary Liberal Party always stands up for what's right and stands up for Israel. And I, and, I want to, and I want to just put on record how proud I am to lead a, parli a party, particularly a state parliamentary team that is rock solid in its support of Israel how proud I am of this team and how much in the state parliamentary sphere they stand up for Israel, every single one of them. And not a single instance goes by where it's needed to be either corrected, whacked down or advocated that this team won't do for Israel because that's what's right to do. So thank you everyone for being here tonight in such great numbers. To uh, Joshua, who spoke so magnificently as, as you said, as an Australian, who just happens to be Jewish as an Australian. Um, your history and your speech tonight sums up everything as to why this party believes the way it does. While we're also proud to say we are a Zionist political party. And, <laughs> and thank you for that magnificent speech. Can I just say to Senator Patterson, to Tim Wilson and David Southwick for organising the Liberal Friends of Israel in the great tradition that Helen Shardy, the then member for Caulfield, established. Well done, guys. Thank you. This is so important. And it's not just important, as Josh said, for the, for the Jewish community. It is important for the Liberal Party. It's one of our core beliefs. It's one of our core beliefs. And it is so important that we have this function and this group. So thank you, guys, for organising this tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I think back to... Um, one of the first times David took me to a JCCB function. And when I came out 
and, um, and I'd heard a number of speeches about Israel and why we stand with Israel and why it's so important for the Liberal Party to do that and why we want to do that. And one of the eloquent presentations was around Israel's history. After going through the Holocaust, after fighting once, then again, then being invaded not by one or two, by every neighbour and fighting all over again, the struggle of the Jewish people and the struggle of that country in the last 60 or 70 years is unbelievable. But that country is just not another country in the Middle East, as we all know. It is a democracy. It's the only one. It's the only country in the Middle East that tried, not assassinated, tried its absolute enemy in Adolf Eichmann. Fair, reasonable trial by the rule of law. It's the only country in the Middle East that has people on its high court that are Jewish, Druze, Christian, Muslim, and so forth. It's a country that has fair and free elections, a fair, free, and critical media. It's a country that has established itself as a world leader in new technology, but also a country that's established itself as a hub of intellectual and social thought and debate. It doesn't stifle any of it, it promotes it. In short, it's a country that shares our values. So as Australians, why do we stand with Israel? Because Israel is the same as Australia. It thinks the same, it operates the same. It doesn't operate as a totalitarian state. It doesn't operate as a state that silences critics internally and shuts down political opponents and brawls in the parliament if there is one. It's a country that deserves to be supported. We in this country always say, a fair go, stand by those who do what's right, fight for the peace if necessary. And that is everything that Israel is doing and it's why we should support it. And it's why it's so important for the Liberal Party to, again, as Josh said so eloquently, put a line in the sand and stamp its authority and yet again say there is a repository in the parliament for those who know what's right in the Middle East, who knows what's right for the Jewish people, for the Australian Jewish community, and importantly, for all those people of the many faiths who call Israel home. Because Israel is a multicultural country. It has people of many faiths within its borders. When I was in Israel with David and my chief of staff, we went, Scott Pearce and I went for a walk in the morning, seven in the morning, and saw a terrorist attack. We were part of it, stuck there in the old city. At seven in the morning, 7.30 in the morning on the Sabbath, and it hits you. This is what they live with every single day. And then you see the BBC reports saying how Israeli troops had shot dead three people at the Lion Gate. Shot dead three people. In fact, neutralised three terrorists who had killed two Israeli soldiers. And that's the reporting. And it angers you. Because everything Josh said is right about those seeking to delegitimise a democracy, a state with the same shared values as Australia, a state that has fought so many people who it didn't wasn't a, a, the aggressor, the others were the aggressor to it. It had to fight for the peace so many times, and to see that over and over again, you know, ladies and gentlemen, for those who are not Liberal Party members, let me tell you. It's very, very, very hard, in fact near impossible, to get a unanimous resolution at a Liberal Party State Council. <laughs> but just saying. But when the Liberal Party, Kate Ashmore moved this, Daniel Wheel, and the Liberal Party voted unanimously that we move our embassy to Israel's undisputed capital city. Which is, is, 
because no one has questioned the legitimacy of West Jerusalem. And that's where the capital city is, and that's where the Knesset is, and that's where the High Court is, and that's where our embassy should be. That's where our trade office will be if we're elected. And again, motions which have asked Australia to stand by Israel in the United Nations. How proud we were as Liberals seeing our country as but one of two. It's a shame it wasn't a hell of a lot more countries, but for those two countries, one of them was us, standing with Israel there in the United Nations. And so we should, and as Josh said correctly, we worry about what might be the case should there be a change of government on that kind of strength standing with this relationship. Because under a Liberal government nationally, that will be the case and that is the kind of approach we will take. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an absolute honour to be here. It is an honour to speak at this function. It's an honour to be here in Central Shul again. And it's an honour to yet again reaffirm with absolute conviction and without any hesitation or qualification that I lead a Zionist political party. More the point, that the Liberal Party, particularly here in Victoria, will always be a repository for those who, guarantee, who appreciate, who love, who respect and who want to promote peace and freedom. And in the Middle East, that country is Israel. And that is why the Liberal Party here in Victoria will always be a Zionist political party. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you, Rabbi, for having us here tonight. It is indeed an honour to be here. And it really thrills my heart to see the Jewish community and the Christian community beginning to come together in a new way. We've seen it in Sydney and now we're seeing it in Melbourne. It brings great joy to me. I've been associated with Israel for over 30 years now, since my first tour to Israel. And then I sang in the choir for the um, International Christian Embassy Jerusalem Feast of Tabernacles for 10 times. I lived in Israel from 1997 to 2001. And since coming back to Australia, I've run a ministry that prays for Israel for the last 17 years. I've also led seven tours. Uh, seven tour groups to Israel, uh, with an eighth one coming up in September. And I've written two books about the Australian light horse in Israel um, and the biblical implications of that, the significance of it. I've been asked tonight to represent the Christian community that stand with Israel. And I want to say to the Jewish people and to Israel, there are many of us. You are not alone. <laughs> Um, there was a petition put into Parliament last year, signed by 8,000 Australian Christians in support of Israel and moving the embassy to Jerusalem. <laughs> last year for the 100th anniversary of Besheva, we had over 20 Christian groups that went over there. So that was many thousands of Christians also much to the surprise of the Department of Vets Affairs, who couldn't work out why there were so many people interested in Besheva. More, they told me, than any other uh, commemoration except for Gallipoli. So, very strange, we want to celebrate victories and not just the losses. <laughs> Jews and Christians share a common book. You call it the Tanakh and we call it the Old Testament. And it says a lot about Israel. From that, we read the Hebrew prophets telling us that in the end days, there will be, the Jewish people will be returned from the ends of the earth to the land of their forefathers. 
that the cities will be rebuilt, the deserts will blossom, and that the people will be restored to their original purpose, to be a light to the nations, that they will be, that God will be their God and they will be his people. So we as Christian community, we support the plans that are laid out by the ancient prophets that we are seeing in our day beginning to be fulfilled. He made an eternal covenant and eternal means forever. So we support the Jewish people and the nation of Israel. And personally for me also, I support democracy over dictatorship. I support humanity over barbarism. I support respect over violence. And it's my pleasure this evening to be able to introduce to you Dave Sharman. Dave is of Indian descent, but he was born in Vancouver in Canada. So Dave, if you decide to stand for Parliament, that could present a few problems for you. <laughs> you better get the paperwork right first. He graduated from Taramara High School in Sydney in 1993 with a tertiary entrance rank of 100%. He was a top student in New South Wales. So if you need a brains trust, may I suggest befriending this man tonight, because he could come in very useful. In 1994 to 1997, he did a Bachelor of Arts and a Master of Arts at Cambridge University, where he graduated in law with first class honours. He returned to Australia, where he eventually began working for the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, and completed a Master's in International Relations from Deakin University. He served as a legal advisor to Alexander Downer, and he had appointments in Washington DC and Port Mosby. He was the head of the International Division of the Department of the Prime Minister and Cabinet from 2010 to 2012, and he acted as an advisor to Julia Gillard while she was Prime Minister. From August 2013 to June 2017, he was the Australian Ambassador to Israel. He was then aged 37, and he was the youngest Australian ambassador ever appointed. During this time, he served with distinction, and not just with his head, but also with his heart. He welcomed the Australian Lighthorse Association team to his house during that visit, and I'm reliably told that the gentlemen were not backward in taking advantage of his bar. <laughs> And that reminds me of the light horse soldiers in World War I. They heard about a city in southern Palestine that was called Beer Shiva, and they said, let's charge for it. <laughs> in 2018, he joined Kelly and Partners Chartered Accountants to lead the government's initiatives and innovation team. Dave is married to Rachel and has three daughters. Please welcome Dave Sharma. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Jill. I, I'm still blushing. I don't think my, even my own mother would speak so, uh, so highly of me. Um, Rabbi Reisenberg and uh, all the shul, thank you so much for having me here this evening. Uh, to um, Minister Josh Frydenberg uh, and his federal parliamentary colleagues, uh, Tim Wilson and Senator James Patterson, uh, thank you for having me here this evening and thank you for your initiative and your leadership in setting up such a forum. To the Leader of the Opposition, Matthew Guy and uh, David Southwick and your parliamentary colleagues too, it's great to see so many of you here standing alongside Israel and of course uh, members of local government too who play an important role in defending and protecting Israel uh, on a day-to-day -day level and the Jewish community. Um, it's hard to match what, uh, what my predecessors have said in terms of eloquence or uh, persuasiveness in why we need to be out there defending Israel and making the case for Israel 
within our own communities and within our own, within our own political systems and governments. So let me just talk a little bit about my own personal reflections on my time in Israel and I think why I have become such a strong supporter uh, in turn of Israel and such a great believer in bodies uh, such as these. As, um, as Jill said, uh, I arrived in Israel um, in July uh, 2013 and uh, on my very first week in Israel I visited the Golan Heights and to a, uh, a lookout point called Mount Bental uh, which looks out directly into Syria, looks out on the plains of the Golan Heights through which the Syrian army invaded Israel in 1948, uh, in 1967, in 1973 again. Uh, and through where you can now see uh, the civil war in Syria is still raging. Uh, and where you can see uh, rebel emplacements, um, installations used by the Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps, the Quds Force, uh, and see Damascus in the distance, a distance uh, of not more than 60 miles or 100 kilometres from where you stand. Uh, and I saw that and I thought about how fragile Israel's existence is and how um, what we take for granted in Australia, defensible borders and strategic depth, um, Israel uh, lacks in volumes. And on my way home, um, my wife and I, Rachel, we stopped at a hospital in the north of Israel called Ziv Hospital, where um, without much fanfare and uh, without much publicity at all, Israel uh, was treating and continues to treat to this very day civilian victims of the Syrian civil war who present themselves uh, on Israel's uh, fences and borders and checkpoints and are brought in by the Israeli Defence Forces to Israeli hospitals where uh, they receive medical care and attention the same as any other Israeli citizen would. And this is from a country that's still formally at a state of war with Israel. And I thought how this is a story, a side of Israel that is too little known about and too little told and too little reflected upon when people reach their own judgments and conclusions about Israel's behaviour. So that was my first week in Israel. My first month in Israel, I was, uh, my family and I were issued with gas masks. Uh, and had to teach our children, one of whom was as young as uh, eight weeks, I think, at the time, how to fit a gas mask. This is the time when um, the Syrian regime um, first used chemical weapons. Unfortunately, it's become uh, a repeating occurrence since then. Uh, but when they first used chemical weapons, and there was a fear that uh, an American airstrike, uh, which unfortunately did not follow, but an American airstrike would follow, which would then prompt the Syrians to retaliate against Israel. So. Myself and my family joined queues of many other people at post offices uh, around the country to uh, receive gas masks, to learn how to be fitted with them, to know how to store them and where to keep them and what you needed to do if a gas attack was coming. And I thought then about how uniquely challenging the circumstances are in which Israelis must live uh, uh, and exist on a day-to-day -day level with all the other stresses and concerns of their life that they had these concerns going on. In my first year in Israel, the Gaza war broke out uh, in 2014, uh, and I got used to going to a bomb shelter quite often uh, at the office and at home. Uh, I got used to checking an app that we all had on our phone called Red Alert or Sever Adom, which would go off every time a rocket was incoming, and you'd check and you'd find out where it was heading for and whether you needed to go to the bomb shelter or whether you knew people in that area. And I got used to checking in with my family, my wife and my children, every time a rocket attack came into Tel Aviv to check whether they were okay, whether they'd made it to a bomb shelter. And throughout my time in Israel, I became accustomed to the sort of indiscriminate terrorist violence that you see and that we see on our screens uh, and that Matthew spoke about during his time in Jerusalem, be it a massacre at a synagogue, be it shootings in markets, be it uh, knifings and stabbings on, on the waterfront of Tel Aviv bed car rammings of recent IDF recruits. I saw all of these uh, and realised how this was a fabric of day-to-day -day life in Israel and how difficult and challenging it was for everyone who spent time there to live with these stresses as a background to everything else they have to do. And I also became accustomed to urgent calls from the Israeli Foreign Ministry at all uh, times of the day and evening asking for Australia's help and our support with an anti-Israel resolution that was being pushed in any number of UN bodies, be it the Human Rights Council, be it UNESCO, be it the UN General Assembly, and asking for Australia to do something to help Israel, to at least stand alongside Israel, to lend moral weight to their cause and moral legitimacy to their cause, even if we weren't able to defeat the resolution. And all this brought home to me that the challenges that Israel faces are really quite unique. The challenges to its security, 
both throughout its history, but of course until this very day. The challenges to its legitimacy with large numbers of countries around the world, including most of Israel's neighbours, not accepting, not recognising that the Jewish people have a right to their homeland, to their own sovereign state in the land of Israel. And the challenge of disproportionality, what Josh spoke about earlier, Israel being the only country with a dedicated agenda item at the Human Rights Council. Uh, Israel where at the last UN General Assembly, 21 resolutions, that's 21 resolutions were passed, focused on Israel whilst there were six on the rest of the world. And this is why I think groups like uh, Liberal Friends of Israel is, are so important because the challenges that Israel faces are unique and because Israel needs our help in a way that few other countries do. It's also because the public discussion in Australia and around the world desperately needs a more informed contribution and a more informed debate. There is too little heat and not enough light and too much judgment and too little understanding when it comes to discussions around Israel. And finally, I think the Liberal Friends of Israel is important because Australia has a special responsibility, a unique responsibility and a special responsibility. Because of our history, our involvement in the creation of the State of Israel, the modern State of Israel, be it uh, in 1917 with the charge of the light horse at the Battle of Besheva, be it in 1948, be it in our support that we've lent Israel uh, at critical moments in its history, at critical junctures uh, in the councils of the world and in the councils of the world's capitals. But also, of course, because of our values and our interests, because Israel is the only country in the Middle East that truly shares our values, because Israel is the only country in the Middle East that truly looks and feels like Australia. And as, Australian, as an Australian who's lived there, and speaking to many Australians who've travelled there, you would know this intuitively. It's a country where you can feel at home, and it's because the values and the interests that we share are much the same. Now, although we are a very long way from Israel here in Australia, I think just knowing that groups like this exist, if you sit in Israel, you know, you can feel an isolating sort of a place. You feel like the whole world uh, is against you. Here it is, this small country, uh, not wanting to harm its neighbours, not wanting to trouble anyone, just wanting to be allowed to get on with its life, uh, wanting to support its citizens, do their best. Um, and often you can feel like the whole world is against you. And I think knowing that groups like this exist, that are prepared to come together and talk openly about Israel and support Israel and defend Israel uh, at all the times that matters, at all the times that matter, uh, and make it part of their daily discourse is immensely important. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for having me here this evening. Thank you for coming together tonight. Thank you for pledging your support to the cause of Israel. Uh, it's a gesture that I know uh, will be valuable in the years to come and that will be much appreciated in Israel. Thank you. Dave, thank you very much. You are a great Liberal, you are a great friend of Israel. There's just one thing that Jill left out in her introduction to Dave that will surprise you. Dave was appointed Ambassador to Israel by Foreign Minister Bob Carr. <laughs> Perhaps the only good decision Bob Carr made as Foreign Minister. Uh, we'll now welcome back the Shul Choir for Akanu and Adon Alam. Geula 
In 1964, Donald Horn coined the phrase lucky country for Australia. And while his book in fact used the term in a derogatory fashion, the phrase lucky country has come to be synonymous with Australia and the many opportunities that she and her citizens have. For my family, and I'm sure for many others in this room, Australia was definitely the lucky country as they arrived here seeking a new life and new opportunities. Together they and the other immigrants of our country have built a vibrant multicultural society which gives us much to be proud of. For Zionists of Victoria, the roof body of over 50 Zionist organisations in Victoria, which is tasked with connecting Israel with both the Victorian Jewish community and the wider community, 
We are especially proud and grateful for the bipartisan support that Israel enjoys among the two major political parties. This support is not something that we take for granted. We are very aware that it comes from a deep understanding of the challenges and achievements of Israel. An understanding that Israel's story is a complex one that is rarely portrayed in the media in a way that makes any attempt to explain its intricacies. Israel, like every other country in the world, is not perfect. But we are all too aware that so often media reports fail to even attempt to provide a balanced view of events affecting her. Groups such as the one being relaunched tonight pay an incredibly valuable role in reinforcing the support that we enjoy in this state and working with us to tell Israel's story and increase the knowledge and awareness of Israel. Since the relaunch of the Victorian Liberal Friends of Israel was announced late last year during a visit of the Foreign Minister Julie Bishop to Beth Weitzman, the hub of the Victorian Jewish community, I know there has been a lot of work in the background to reach this evening as we formally relaunch the group. My thanks go to the patrons of the Victorian Liberal Friends of Israel, David Southwick MP, Senator James Patterson and Tim Wilson MP for their initiative in relaunching this group. It is amazing to see so many members of parliament here with us this evening who have taken time out of their busy schedules to be here and I thank them and also everyone else who has come to show support for both the Victorian Liberal Friends of Israel and also the State of Israel. The Victorian Jewish community looks forward to working with this group and other similar initiatives to ensure that the amazing story of Israel, her growth and her challenges can be disseminated as widely as possible. Shireen, thank you very much. Well, I don't know about you, but personally, I'm feeling very inspired. Thank you very much for joining us here tonight. The question now is, where to from here? The purpose of the Liberal Friends of Israel is to strengthen, strengthen the relationship between two natural friends, the Jewish community and the Liberal Party, and to provide us to work with all other communities with a forum to work on our shared objectives. It is up to us to make sure that support for Israel within the Liberal Party always remains strong, and I am sure that it will. It also falls to us to ensure that good Liberals who support Israel are elected to Parliament to advance our cause. You will all have a very important role to play in the months ahead to ensure that is the case, just across the road in the federal seat formerly known as Melbourne Ports. As you all know, Michael Danby is retiring and sadly, there is a very real risk that the Greens, plagued as they are by anti-Semitism, could end up winning the seat and representing the second largest Jewish seat in Australia. We must not allow that to happen. Sadly, we also know that whoever the Labor Party nominates will be fighting a losing battle for Israel within a party that is rapidly moving to the left. The Liberal Party has not yet chosen our candidate, but whoever it is, I know that they will be a strong supporter of Israel. They may even be with us in the room tonight. <laughs> the best interests of the cause of Israel will always be, in, be served by ensuring that we have a Liberal government in Canberra, and with a 1.2% margin we can win the newly named seat of McNamara. I hope that we can count on your support in that task. Our next event will be back here in the shul for a Rosh Hashanah breakfast with the Foreign Minister, Julie Bishop, on Friday the 31st of August. Keep an eye on your emails for further details. Uh, before we close, I'd like to thank our organising committee for all their hard work in putting this evening together. Uh, David Van, Noah Block, Lexi Cowell, Daniel Wheel, Jane Rapke, Daniel Elberg, and David Kitchen. Now, in a moment, I'll invite you to join us next door in the hall for some refreshments. Please note, as you leave the building, our security has asked us not to congregate outside for any great length. But for one final item this evening, I'd ask you all to stand for the Israeli national anthem, 
Hatikva. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us here tonight. Please join us next door for a drink and some refreshments before you head home. And could I ask the official party and the members of parliament who are here to just join us on the stage for a quick photo. Thank you.